The new overhaul update for Tower Defense Simulator. There's a lot to get into. Firstly, let's get into a recap. If you remember in last time's Tower Defense Simulator video, there were a lot of issues with the game's hardcore release. This is probably the most controversial update so far because it was hyped up to be a live event. In fact, we even tried to stream it on the channel. Unfortunately, when releasing the event, players found it to be rushed and unstable. Players could already buy premium crates all for free. It was a huge buggy mess that just wasn't ready to be released. And players found a lot of issues with the new update. To say the least, it was received very poorly. The developers issued an apology since then, and since then, they have been working to make sure that this update wasn't rushed like last time. All bugs were properly texted and fixed. And more. The entire code rewrite came as a change to the game. And you have people who are happy with the new changes, and some are extremely dissatisfied as they say it works like an entirely new game. It's all complex, and in today's video we'll be viewing the changelogs of TDS and how these changelogs contributed to the game's reception. We'll also be talking about my personal thoughts on the update, and I'll try and cover absolutely everything as best as I can in this video. Let's get started. My name's Tuki Alex, and this is our game review series where we take a deeper look into games. <laughs> What's up, Hashi Nerd Squad, and welcome back to another video. Before we get started in today's video, make sure to subscribe for this Roblox drama, news, tips, and tricks, and more. Don't forget to turn on the bell so you never miss out on one of my videos. Anyways, let's get started with the video. So this is going to be a long one. Previously, if you'd like to watch the Tower Defense Simulator previous video, you can do so using a link that I'll add in the description if you like previous context. If not, let's explain things quickly again. Tower Defense Simulator had a full update planned around two months ago, but this update quickly went sour. Scheduled as a live event, many were very hyped. Things started to go at KO first. You had your live event, where you just saw a black circle count down to zero, and then the new game, people had trouble joining, and so forth. This is where the disaster started to come in. The disaster came in when the players discovered they could get a pre-premium carry due to a bug. They reported this bug to the developers, and the developers found even more bugs, and more bugs, and more bugs which caused the fanbase to unfortunately be angry. With all these bugs, they decided to revert the update. They blamed this due to pressure on the community, which a lot of people said they would be much happier if the update release finished and well rather than a rushed one. So after months of working, which they said they would do to do to school, the update was finally released, and this leads us to now, in which we have our re-release. Before the re-release, they found a couple bugs. These bugs were likely to be fixed in time, unlike last time. So the re-release was scheduled to 8pm last night, the game was down for around an hour and 30 minutes to migrate the data, and clones are releasing later today. In fact, we already have one that is released. I'll reveal these codes in a pinned comment if the video re-releases by then, hopefully. This update, wow, it's been a lot different. Let's go into our first look at the update. My first thoughts on the update is everything looked neat and whoa, the game's visuals, GUI, and more have changed. The game automatically looks a lot cleaner when you start the game. There's a new lobby and much more, I think, in terms of visual changes, the team did a great job. The visual changes were a very important part of the update, they were another part of why the code was rewritten. All save data luckily migrated into the new update, so there are no issues in terms of players and that. Going into the game, we can now see it has 8 players instead of 4, and from there, a lot of players' changes were made, so let's check them out in the changelog, shall we? Here is the first part of the changelog that was released in the update. If you don't know what a changelog is, a changelog is a part of the update that explains changes. Pretty clear, pretty forward. Firstly, new UI. UI base at image labels, icons at the loud screen, coin slash gem images, activism. Great job in the UI, I also think the GUI works spectacular. Although I have had a couple issues running into clicks, but I hope this is resolved. I love the new GUI. Looks very clean and definitely brings a modern tone into the game. Completely recoded and overhauled game. Loading speeds tens of times the faster before. Reload functions, no more GPS funks. With the game's overhaul in place, the overhaul is nice, but it feels different. It feels somewhat like an entirely new game. This entirely new game plays a lot differently. As you see later, they actually removed the game mode, Golden Mode. Tower functions have been recoded too, so that way there are no more DPS bugs, which are a great change. If you don't know what a DPS is, a DPS bug is a damage per second bug. These bugs would greatly affect the gameplay and how you would play. One second it would just be like, oh, am I doing damage? And the next second it would be like, I still don't know. Major gameplay bug that needs to be fixed, so good work to the team. Hardcore mode, level 50 required, 50 waves in total, 50% price increases, rewards a new currency gem, 0% shared cash. 
Now, last time the hardcore mode was very hyped. The hardcore mode actually plays hard, which I appreciate, because many players felt Fallen was way too easy for their standards. With this new hardcore mode, hopefully we can get a challenge out of gameplay and strategic placing. When playing the hardcore mode, I found my strategies were a lot more accurate, and I'd like to think that when I place more towers, I place more of them articulately. Level 50 is required, making sure we have no noobs. You know how much it sucks when a noob votes Fallen, and they're like, yeah, I can do it, but you're like, no, you can't. That's good. We need a level cap to make sure the players that are actually playing are actually good. 0% shared class makes it especially harder, which I appreciate. Well, not many appreciate much harder gameplay, as it just feels harder and frustrating. But I believe that it can give an incentive, so there's that. Next, the new currency gem can be used to buy new towers and shop. These gems can come real handy, but I just wish they had a bit more of a purpose. Gems have a lot of potential, and I'm excited to see the potential that come from gems. VIP Game Pass, 25% extra XP from games, 3 premium crates, and a rainbow name tag. There's finally an XP booster, which I know a lot of players who want to level up faster will buy. The 3 premium crates can come in useful handy, but not too much like a golden crate, so it's perfect. The 25% extra XP can come real useful, and the rainbow neck tag is just a cool cosmetic change. Profile cards, you can click on users in the lobby to view their stats. This means a lot of people won't really bother to look at levels anymore, and they don't appear right away. You have to click on them now. Badge rewards as quest, I feel like they already have a system like this, but badge rewards can increase playability. New Twitter code system, this code system will increase engagement along players. In-game dialogue system, great change again with the idea of increasing engagement. Increased rewards for login streak. Login streak was already right for players I found, but this will make it even better. Revamped leaderboards. I know this change won't make people happy. And next is bullet trainers. Increased in slot modes to six. Halloween preparation. Spooky. This could be exciting. Now let's go into the main changes, the tower changes. Accelerator is earned by using hardcore gems. I've heard this tower is actually pretty good and definitely worth the gems from what I've seen. Charges for X seconds and releases a constant base damage. Militant has replaced Dawn Tower. Dawn Tower had personality to it, you know? I don't like this change at all. The personality of it made it fun. That's why it was one of the best towers. I definitely don't like this change. Renamed Towers, Outlaw is now known as a Ranger. Shredder is known as a Slasher. Holiday Archer is known as just an archer and Enforcer as a shotgunner. That's going to be a confusing change for me personally. I don't see what was wrong with the old names, but they weren't too broad enough. Rework Towers, Scout Soldier, Sniper, Slasher, Archer, Cowboy, Military Base, John Militant, Mini Gunner, Pyro, Freezer, Frost Blaster, Electro Shocker. All these towers have entirely new moves and combats. I think the worst change was Cowboys. The Cowboys never practically killed it. The Cowboy a lot of people used to spam and now because of some of the upgrades are gone, you need to fully upgrade it in order to detect hiddens, which is the worst. A lot of people are not happy with the revamps. It's ultimately with the update and the rework of the entire game and it's gotten even more difficult. This includes most of the towers. Redesigned towers, Mortar, Outlaw, Shroud Gunner, Slasher, Archer, mini Minigunner, Military Base, Soldier, Sniper, John, Slash Militant, Pyromancer, Rocketeer, Ace Pilot, Farm, DJ Booth. They fixed Holiday Archer, Minigun revs up to like Minigunner, Ace Pilot now only drops bombs on enemies in its range, Freezer and Shot Blast Ice Effect recoded, Freezer changed to Single Shot, Explosion recorded, Gladiator Stun Mechanic. These changes mostly include Hidden Wave changes which is a lot more difficult to equate for. Ultimately, the game has cut down to 3 modes making these changes more relevant than ever. It's very likely that you'll have to change your loadout. New maps. Wrecked Battlefield, Winter Abyss, Replaces Winter, Sky Islands, Retro Zone are the brand new apps that you'll have to check out. I think they did a great job on them. There are a lot of remade maps. Moonbase, Crossroads, Badlands, Nether, Dead Ahead, Tropical Isles, Autumn Fallings, Dusty Bridges, Four Seasons. These map changes were made to accommodate with the new update. Now new zombies. Ghosts can face through moving vehicles. Flying, only cliff towers can target these enemies. Lead, only explosion and energy based attacks can taste these enemies. The removed skins include old animations. Rest in peace gold mode and platinum skins which were replaced. A lot of people are angry that gold has been removed and they have had these changes. I think that's it we need to cover for this update. Let me know your thoughts and thanks for watching.